Here we go again. Another Casio. This time a uh, TV 7500. A little bit better quality than the first one, but still garbage. Terrible picture. This one here, like the other one, well, this one doesn't have a picture either, but at least this one's got, well, sort of a picture. You can see something, but it definitely has a problem. Let's see if we can get this one going. We got another one of those LCD color televisions by Casio. This one's a TV 7500, a little bit larger screen. And this one just makes one hell of a noise when we have it on tuner. But if we notice on this one, I see some faint color bars. See the faint color bars? So this one is actually passing some type of a signal to the screen. So a little different problem than the other one which wasn't passing any signal. Let's uh, pop this one apart and see whether this one can be uh, made functional. I'm not holding my breath again. Just like the last one I wasn't holding my breath. Is at least this one's got some type of signal that's getting to this display. I don't know how much different these are inside. What a long screw there. Okay, so this one here, different set, of course, different, uh, different board. Similar, but different. Of course, on this one, the the backlight is actually part of the, the board itself. Video here. Power over here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got lines that go through the, through the picture, like almost like power supply ripple. That control, by the way, is the horizontal hold that I'm adjusting. You can see a very, very washed out picture. So we're going to pull the LCD screen out on this because I, I doubt very much whether the problem would be on the analog board. like to look under this uh, this uh, shield so I'm just going to undo the plug here and uh, remove the shield if I can Okay, on this one we've got a couple caps on the back of this board. We'll check them, see whether they look okay. Two point five. 
2.2, what are these, what size are these caps? They're 4.7, they both, they're both 4.7. So, yeah, they should be fine as far as their ESR goes. They're 4.7 at 50. Both of them are 4.7 at 50. So 4.7 at 50 would be, uh, you know, anything, 4.2 almost basically, and these are measuring less than that, so I think the, uh, I think the caps are probably okay. Uh, I don't know what's on the other side of this board. I guess there's only one way to find out, and that's take out these four screws. I'll take a look on the other side. I guess there's four more screws on the front here to remove this other shield. There's the light assembly. It's got its own wires for it. It's supply. This one's a U-shaped fluorescent. That's that one. And, and here's all of our, our fancy ICs that drive the panel, the on-glass ICs. It's got twice as many as the other one. There's no components on the other side of the board, so there's basically just two capacitors on this side, and that's it. These are 4.7 at 50. Uh, there's only two of them. The, the, say the ESR measure is okay. I'm just going to change both of these two just for the hell of it. See what happens. See, see if it fixes anything. I've got a couple small little ones about that size. So let's just try changing them. There's only two of them.
Okay. Anything different? I don't see anything different here. I see exactly the same. So we know it's not, it uh, wasn't those caps. That's for sure. I got the same crappy picture as I had before. Sure looks like a filter cap problem though from, from the look of from it. Uh, we'll, we'll measure some of these other ones on this board. See whether any of these other ones are measuring a little bit off. This one's got a few bigger ones. You might have to pull this board out just to check it. It just this one looks like a power supply problem, that's what this one looks like. Yeah, you got to unsolder the damn battery terminal from one end. It doesn't come out of the uh, of the cabinet. There we go. Now the board's out. See, this one's got a DC to DC converter. I think that's just for the that's for the the uh, the backlight, though. I believe that's just for the backlight because there's no circuitry on here. So that that's what that's for. That's the ballast. So that's obviously not going to be the problem. That's the high voltage generator. We do have a, a, a DC to DC converter right here on this one, and there's a couple caps in its circuit, which are ones that I I suspect if it's going to be a capacitor, it might be maybe one of these two. Right, these are directly on this DC to DC converter, so let's just let's just take a look at these ones here. The symptom on this one, it, it just with those lines in the picture, it sure looks like a it sure looks like a power supply problem. How's this one measuring? Is this one open? Maybe this one's the problem. Maybe it's this cap right there. That cap is measuring open. That cap's okay. I bet yeah, it's just one one cap on this one. This little yellow one. Let's take this little yellow one out. Gonna, I'm just going to pull the board, the other board off here just for protect that ribbon cable. I'll take that out and I'll take out the back light. So I suspect maybe, maybe this cap is the one that's at fault. Gee, that's really tiny, that, that board. Holy smoke. You barely see it. Just 
check and make sure that there's no there's no bridges, which there's none. Okay. back in, put in the lights. And try firing this thing up and see whether there any there's been any changes. That cap did test open our very high ESR. And when I removed it there was signs that it's leaking. You see, it, you can see, it's been leaking that cap. So that cap definitely bad. Is it the only thing that's wrong with this? Well, I guess we'll find out pretty quick when I plug in the power. That looks like color bars to me. Doesn't it look like color bars to you? How do I work this thing? Well, that looks like color bars to me. I would say somewhat of success. I don't know how the how how good these things used to be. This is pretty old, but uh, it's also quite bright in here. But and my display is not back together properly. But uh, certainly we have we have a picture that we didn't have before. You can see the backlight tube in this thing in the background. But again, I don't have the reflector all back together. So let's kind of put it together and see how it looks. put the shielding back on put the display back into the cabinet and then we'll test this unit and see how the picture looks oops that doesn't go there that one goes over here into the back here. That's the hole to adjust the color level. There's a there's a uh, control behind there. This is the tint. There's one there that you use a small screwdriver to adjust for the color. And there's one more screw here, a long one. Antenna. Not that the antennas really useful for anything not now because uh, there's no analog broadcast the only thing this thing can do is display video and if you have a modulator a little portable TV transmitter you could receive a picture from it but really it's the only way it's really going to receive anything or display any video is through the uh, the input on the back of it and we have color bars. For what it is, it has a picture. 
from the angle of the camera there it's not very good but yeah it's actually probably about as good as this thing ever was when it was new these weren't great these Casios were not spectacular um, it's just that tint uh, where is it here turn it this way there we go that's a bit better there that looks a bit better from my angle here it's not bad the problem with these early LCDs is that the the actual angle was terrible <laughs> right but if you're sitting right at the right angle I guess they were watchable there we go from my angle here it's not too bad as you can see ah, you guys get all the reflection if we even move the camera over a bit you can see that lamp in there I can't much do can't do much about that but there is the picture this one I guess is fixed okay so here's the picture off of this one as good as I can display it maybe adjust that color a bit so this one's got a bit better picture as you can see than the other one still not uh, anything to write home about these were relatively early in terms of the uh, LCD TVs so they were watchable but certainly not anything to write home about as you can see a lot better resolution than that first one but uh, still it had a picture that uh, left a lot to be desired that's a scratch you see by the way in the in the plastic it shows up on camera but uh, it actually looks better uh, when you're watching it really watching it have to adjust the because of the angle right you can you can adjust the, uh, the contrast here much better than the other one but certainly nothing like the later generation LCD TVs had I'm just kind of blocking that out because I don't want to to get hit with a copyright strike for playing the FBI that's what's on TV right now and I know that if I let that thing play for more than a couple seconds I'm sure I would have uh, some explaining to do because they have a, a tendency to not to uh, take it uh, well when you show their content here a commercial we'll put a commercial on commercial will be okay there we go a peloton is it a peloton commercial i think so anyway or is this the or is this the maybe this is the shopping channel anyway probably put the shopping channel on that one will be okay if I can find it it's in here somewhere oh the weather channel there I can put the weather channel on so that's the uh, TV 7500 all fixed up not you know not terrific but as good as it uh, is going to be these are getting pretty old and the LCDs themselves are probably getting a little bit tired after all these years. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.